Terry Sabelle Foy, your cheerleader of dreams. Glad you're joining me today because I decided to ask my friends on Instagram what some of their biggest challenges were and just see if I could help provide some solutions. Now, I only know how to speak from experience. When I get results, I like to share it. And today's topic, I just happen to understand 100%. The question was, how do I break out of a slump or a rut? I feel stuck in life. Well, before I share this remarkable story that's gone around the world, I want to mention something real quick that I am hosting for the first time ever, a faith building event, a free faith building event with my heroes. Now I'm still having a hard time comprehending that I'm doing this. Now I called it a faith building event on purpose. I want to build your faith for your building, whether it's a house, an office, a condo, a church, land, real estate, God put it on my heart to build your faith for your title deed. Here's why. Hebrews 11.1 1 says, Now faith is the title deed of what you hope for. Now, when I started taking this scripture to heart, a seven and a half year dream of owning our offices came to pass. So I wasn't trying to be super spiritual, but I just decided to host an event on 11.1 based on Hebrews 11.1 1, and ask the men who taught me how to build my faith for impossible dreams to teach you. And they all said, okay. So my dad, Jerry Savelle, Kenneth Copeland, and Jesse Duplantis will be here for a free live stream event. Now I don't want you to miss this historic event that will change your life. Again, it's free, but you have to register to access the live stream event. So just click the link and get your ticket today. I am counting down. Okay, you're gonna love this true story. I heard this from Tony Robbins. Tony was talking about in his early years as an adult, he was broke, living in Venice, California, living in a 400 square foot apartment, feeling sorry for himself, mad at the world, mad at his friend who, lo who he had loaned $1,000 to and wouldn't pay him back, wouldn't return his phone calls. Anyway, Tony got down to $23. Now that's a pretty big slump. He thought, how am I going to eat? How am I going to survive? He was already behind on his rent 30 days. Well, Tony decided to take the $23, walk two or three miles down to El Torito's Mexican restaurant and eat all he could to last him for a few days. <laughs> he thought, I'm just going to load up with food. So he went to go pay and in walks this little boy, seven years old in a little suit. He said there was just something about him. He opened the door for his mom. He pulled out the chair for her. And Tony said it just touched his heart so much to see this. Well, Tony introduced himself to him. Nobody knew who Tony Robbins was at the time. He said, I just want you to know, to this little boy, he said, I want you to know that I've been watching you for the last few minutes. I saw you open the door, pull out your mom's chair, the way you look at her right in the eyes, giving her your full attention. He said, you're a class act. Well, the kid said, well, she's my mom. Tony said, that's even more cool. The kid said, well, I'm not taking her to lunch because I don't have a job yet, I'm eight. Tony said, yes, you are. Now, Tony didn't have this plan, but he reached in his pocket and he pulled out, it was like 18, $19, all that he had left, and he handed it to the kid. The kid said, what's that? Tony said, that's yours. Treat your mom today. The kid said, I can't take that. Tony Robbins said, yes, you can, I'm bigger than you. <laughs> didn't say another word. And see, Aunt Tony said, I didn't do this for attention. I just walked out the door. Tony said, really, I flew out the door, feeling so alive and so free. Now, Tony Robbins said, I should have been scared. But at that moment, he said, scarcity died. It just got out of my life. He went home that night, nothing had changed, but he got home inspired and started writing his dreams, his plans, his goals for life. He thought, well, people fast all the time. I can fast for, you know, four or five days. He got up the next morning, had no fear in him. He said, all of a sudden, the mail arrived and he received the check from the guy who owed him $1,000 and wouldn't return his phone calls with interest. It was a check for $1,200, which could last him for over a month. Tony just started crying and he said that moment changed his entire life. He broke out of a slump, out of a rut, even a mindset by giving. See, you may have heard this before. Successful people are not generous because they're successful. They're successful because they're generous. You know, the billionaire John Templeton, he said that successful people are often taught to be go-getters, but instead they should be go-givers. Have you ever noticed that generous people seem to have more than enough? 
They give what they have, yet their lives are filled with more treasures, wealth, abundance, riches. Well, Anne Frank, I think she said it best. She said, no one has ever become poor from giving. That's because you can't outgive God. And in the process, God gets you out of a rut. Now you may not be convinced yet. So I put together a download for you. It's a free download of 10 promises from God's word to those who are givers. I want you to read this list and get it down on the inside of you. I'm telling you, getting this mindset is gonna shake you out of any rut the enemy has tried to keep you in. So click the link in the description and get this free download of 10 promises from God's word to those who are givers. I'm telling you, God always responds favorably to a generous heart. He's always gonna bless you with more than what you've given. It's the law of sowing and reaping. The Bible says in Proverbs that it's possible to give and yet become richer. Now, I love this story I heard from Joel Osteen. And it was about a young man who grew up very poor in a small city. This is a long time ago. And he would go door to door selling different items, just trying to pay his way through college. Well, at one point, he only had a dime to his name. He was so hungry, he hadn't eaten much in a couple days. But he got his nerve up and he thought, okay, the next house I knock on, I'm just gonna ask them if I can have something to eat. He knocks on the door, opens it up, and this attractive young lady answered the door, like 16 years old. When he saw how beautiful she was, he lost his nerve and he wouldn't ask for anything. But she said to him, you look like you're starving. She said, can I get you something to eat? He said, no, no, no. He said, I would like a glass of water. Well, she went back and she brought him a big glass of cold milk. He thought he'd won the lottery. He couldn't remember the last time he'd had a full glass of milk. He drank every drop, felt so refreshed. Well, he reached in his pocket to pull out the dime he had, and she said, no, you don't owe me anything. She said, my mom taught me to never accept pay for an act of kindness. Well, years and years later, that young girl got very sick and she was treated in a local hospital, but doctors couldn't find out what was wrong with her. So they sent her to this specialist in a big city to a doctor named Dr. Howard Kelly. Well, when he saw her chart and noticed the city she was from, he got very intrigued. So he rushed down to her room and immediately he recognized her as the young girl from years and years ago. Well, Dr. Kelly took on this case personally. He went to great lengths to make sure she got well, she recovered from the illness that she was fighting. Four months later, she fully recovered, ready to leave the hospital. Well, Dr. Kelly requested that his office send the bill directly to him so he could personally approve it. She dreaded looking at that bill, knowing it was probably gonna take her a lifetime to pay it off. When she opened up the bill, Dr. Kelly had written in big letters, paid in full with one glass of cold milk. I love that story because it just proves that God never forgets seed sown, even the seed of a glass of cold milk. See, when you give to others, it comes back to you multiplied. Did you know that you are the most like God when you give? Bible says God so loved that he gave. The wonderful thing about generosity is that anybody can become generous. You can, no matter where you are in life, you have so much more to offer this world than just money. You have time, attention, talents, aid, encouragement, experiences, prayer. You have a social media platform. Even if it's 20 people, you have a platform you could promote someone else. Acts 20, 35 says there is more happiness in giving than in receiving. Well, I started declaring years ago, I am known for my giving. Even when I didn't have much to give, I'm known for my giving. Bible says, I told you earlier, it's possible to give and yet become richer. But there's another scripture that says a generous person will prosper. Not might, not hopefully will, will prosper. I love this one in Proverbs 11, 24. It says, the world of the generous gets larger and larger, but the world of the stingy gets smaller and smaller. You know, recently I sewed my platform. I promote other people's books on my Instagram and Facebook, but I promoted a lady who has a wonderful fitness program. I just promoted that she was having a conference. She grew almost a thousand people in one day because we promoted her. And then she was texting me going, Terry, my course is just exploding. I can't even keep up with all the people registering. Well, do you know in the same month, I signed a book deal with the world's biggest publisher who will be promoting me? Do you think that's coincidental? 
not one bit. God never forgets seed sown. So look for opportunities to give. It will break you out of a slump quickly, guaranteed. Let me remind you, God promises you three things when you give. You get what you sow, you reap after you sow, and you reap more than you sow. So get out of a slump and tap into this higher way of living by ad adopting this habit today. Instead of always praying for a miracle, be someone's miracle. When the bill arrives at lunch today, offer to pay for your coworker's meal. When you can't fit another pair of shoes in your closet, give a beautiful pair to a single mom. When you mow your lawn, offer to mow the elderly widow's lawn as well. Or when you grab a cup of coffee on your way to work, buy a cup of coffee for the person standing behind you. See, when God finds someone who's a consistent giver, get ready. What you make happen for others, God will make happen for you. So be sure and get this download of the 10 promises from God's word to those who are givers. And don't forget, I will be cheering you on to live your dreams. Hey YouTube, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and to get more inspirational content, click one of these videos right here. And remember, I'm cheering you on to live your dreams.